Welcome back. In my last photo walk video, I stated that I was really looking to go to mirrorless and I'd made up my mind I was either going to buy the Nikon ZFC or the Nikon Z6 II. Two totally different cameras. The ZFC is a crop sensor camera, great for vlogging, which is what I do. The Z6 II, a full frame, much better camera, better sensor, vibration reduction inside. Which camera did I buy? I ended up going to the Nikon Z6 II. What made me go to a, a mirrorless instead of just keeping my D500? Because the D500 for Nikon is one of the best cameras you can get for wildlife. So why did I leave my D500 to go to a Z6 II, which isn't the best for wildlife? I have to admit that. I'm going to have some negatives, positives as well. But why? Well, simple answer is YouTube. If you follow my channel, you know I do a lot of wildlife photo walks, bird photo walks, and something that I've really been wanting to add into my videos is video of the birds that I see. And this is something that I've been missing. I've tried it with the D500 and it just doesn't work. The main problem is that on the D500, I've got to rely on the LCD screen at the back here. I cannot look through the viewfinder, unlike mirrorless. Mirrorless, you're just looking through the viewfinder. The digital SLRs, you're looking through here. So I've got to set my focus point at the back here and continuously use my back button focus to focus because it's not going to track anything. It doesn't have full-time AF in video. This was a big problem. Also, the cropping size was 1.7 so I'm already in DX mode and then it's cropping even more. Sure I'm getting closer to the action but when the action is close to me, when the bird is close to me, it is a very big problem. I gave up on using video on my D500. Has a photo camera? It's great. If I wasn't doing YouTube I would have never decided to upgrade from the D500 to the Z6 II. I can guarantee you that, but I really want to grow my YouTube channel and I want to add videos. And this is the only reason why I've gone to mirrorless. Some people might say, why don't you go to just jump straight to the Z9? It is the perfect wildlife camera. I don't have $9,000 to put into a camera. In today's video, I want to show you some of the photos that I took with the Z6 II, the good, side of this camera, the bad side of this camera, because if you've done some research, you'll know that there are bad problems for wildlife with the Z6 II. And I've bought this knowing full well all the problems that I'm facing, especially in the speed for the continuous shooting, because we have continuous low, continuous high, extended continuous high that you can shoot up to 12 frames per second because in continuous high, you only have 5.5 frames per second. The D500 is 10 frames per second. But the way I shoot is focus then release. If you're just having release, you're going to get 10 frames per second all the time. But with focus and release, I average between 7.5 and 8.5 frames per second. And I'm very happy with that. So this is exactly the same way that I've set this camera. And even with focus and release, I'm still getting around five frames per second. So I'm losing about three frames per second. Is that a big deal? Not really, not for me. I'm still going to get enough shots. Yes, I might miss the occasional magic shot, but I'm willing to accept that. Also, if I'm using 12 frames per second, we get what is commonly referred to as blackout. It's not a black frame, as some people think. What it is, is you're seeing the photo that you've just taken. If you're just photographing on a bird that's static, let's say it's fishing, you're not going to see too much difference because the shutter goes so quick, you're seeing basically what you're looking at, but it's just the photo. And it's not even a second, it's like a blink of an eye. Click, 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 click. But if you're tracking a bird, this is where the problem comes in. I haven't been able to do that yet. I've only had the camera for about a week. This is just my first thoughts on going out just twice, very briefly, to test this camera out and to tell you the good and the bad of what I found. At 12 frames per second, when you're in continuous high like this, what you have to remember is that you lose all the extra autofocusing mode. 
you don't have tracking and all that. All you have is single point AF. I put the focus point in the center and I try to track the bird like that. This is how I do it on my D500 because this is the only way that I've known before because there was no tracking on the D500. So not having tracking when I'm following a bird now isn't going to be a big deal for me. Yes, I'm going to get a little bit of the picture before. I'm going to have to get used to tracking the bird. I'm going to be able to manage this. The more I do it, the more I'm going to get comfortable knowing that, yes, I'm just going to lose sight of my bird as it's flying across my screen. In a week and a half's time, I'm going to an air show where I'm going to have very fast planes flying across the screen, some slower planes moving around. I'm going to be really able to test whether I can cope with this. And I'll do a follow-up video in about a month's time of showing examples and saying, yes, I can cope with this. But for the time being, just want to share my initial thoughts. Now, a positive or a negative, positive for landscapes is we're seeing more of the frame because a crop sensor, we've cropped in 1.5 times. But for wildlife, it means that I'm further back than if I was shooting with the D500. It's a 24 megabyte sensor where the D500 is only 20. But if I crop in, let's say to DX mode, the same has my D500, then I'm going from 24 megapixels down to around 10, 11 megapixel. But that's heaps for me. You might say, well, you know, you're losing a lot. Well, I'm only sharing to social media. I rarely sell photos. Let's take a look at some of these photos and I'll show you my thoughts on these. Plus also I'll share video. Now this first photo of a peewee was taken at f5.6. If you follow my channel, you'll know that when I talk about my settings, I shoot wide open on the 200-500 at f5.6. I rarely shoot at f8. But I want to see whether using the Z6 II was going to affect it because I'd read some articles stating that f5.6 is a bit soft with the Z6 II. You really have to go to f8. So I said, like always, I want to do my own testing. I want to see if f5.6 was just as sharp as f8 because at f5.6, I'm getting a shallower depth of field. And this is critical for bird photography. Look at this, f5.6, I'm getting a very shallow depth of field. This is full frame. This next one here shows you that red box here is what I would be shooting if I was using my D500. So this is cropped in to DX. You can see now, look how much I've zoomed in. Now this image here is cropped from 24 megapixel to around 10 megapixel. I'm still getting a very clear image, very shallow depth at field. Let's crop in even more. So the original megapixels was around 6,000. In DX, it's 4,000. This is cropped in to 2,000 megapixels. So I've only got a third of the sensor here. It is still so sharp. I'd focused on the head. I will be able to shoot at f5.6. No problems at all. These next two images here is where I tested the difference between f5.6 and f8. This first photo here taken at f5.6 and I was focused right on the body of the duck here. You can see the background is nice and blurred. This is f8. Now it might look sharper only because there's more depth at field. And the second duck here is getting closer to focus. But look at the difference. F8, F5.6, the background is nicely blurred. Now, side by side, on the left, F5.6, on the right, F8. You can see the background at F8 is more distracting. But look at the birds. They're exactly the same. There is no difference in sharpness between F8 and F5.6. So I will use the 200 to 500 at f5.6 and get great photos. Before I share video, one thing that I do want to address is why would I settle for an inferior mirrorless camera when if I'd gone to Sony, I would have gotten everything that I wanted. Well, it's still cost. And my wife was telling me, she was looking at the prices of Sony. She said, like Charles, look, for the same price you're paying around three and a half grand, you could get a Sony mirrorless that doesn't have the problems of the Z6 II, doesn't have blackout. I said, yes, I understand that if it was just a camera, but then all my gear has to be sold. So whenever you sell camera gear, you take a hit, you're going to lose money. 
So selling all my gear and having to repurchase brand new gear, I would have been up around six, seven thousand dollars. This is why I've stuck to Nikon. I'm not a Nikon fanboy. Yes, I love Nikons. I love the quality of the photos, the colors. I've been using them since 2007. The autofocusing, I'm really going to have to learn, but I'm going to get used to it. Now, something that I'm going to have to get used to, and I knew before I bought this camera, was in extended mode for 12 frames per second. You get blackout, but also you lose all the added autofocusing modes. So you don't get tracking and all that. All you have is single point. And this is what I use on my D500 when I'm photographing birds. Single point AF. There's no tracking on the D500. It would be great if tracking at 12 frames per second was on here, but it's not. I knew that. I'm going to get used to it. But it means that single point, so I put the focus point in the center of the frame and I will track whatever I'm photographing, be it a bird or plane, just like I would do with the D500. I'm going to get like a blackout. I'm going to see that photo that I just took for a millisecond and then the next one. I'm going to have to get used to it and I know that I adapt. I adapt very quickly to whatever I'm using. I'm going to find this out when I go to the air show. Now let's take a look at some video that I took with the Z6 II on a tripod. These swallows were just basking in the early morning sun, preening themselves. You can see it's beautiful here. Now if you're not familiar with shooting video, we normally shoot video two ways. We either shoot at 24 or 25 frames per second or at 30 frames per second. 24 or 25 frames per second is PAL, 30 frames per second is NTSC. If we're shooting, let's say at 25 frames per second, which I'm shooting now on my Sony ZV-1, then my shutter speed has to be double. So 25 frames per second means I'm shooting at 1 50th of a second. If I was shooting in NTSC, then that's 30 frames per second. So my shutter speed would be 1 60th of a second. Because it was so bright on this day, I had to increase my shutter speed as well as my aperture. I am going to be buying an ND filter so that I can shoot at 1 50th of a second. But on this day, all the video that you see here was taken at 1 640th of a second and F18 and ISO 100. These were the settings that I had to use to get this video. You can see there's no problem. It's not perfect, but it's around 85% of the way there. And for the time being, I'm very happy with this. When you're shooting video on the Z6 II is you have continuous tracking and also continuous foc focusing. So the focus works full time. Unlike the D500 where I've got to press back button focus to keep refocusing, it focuses and it tracks the bird or your animal, whatever you're doing. This next one here, I was using tracking. It had no problem at all tracking this grab across the screen as I was slowly panning across. I'm trying to keep up with it because it's swimming very quickly. But the camera had no problem of locking onto this grab here as it's moving across my screen. This is where I found a problem. I locked onto the bird so it knew where it was and it started tracking it very well. But you'll see when it got to the water lilies, this is where it started having a problem, where it started jumping around. But I just recentered the focus where I wanted the bird and then it just started tracking the bird again and I didn't have a problem. This last part here is where the auto tracking completely lost its mind. It just wouldn't track the bird. It kept jumping to the foreground here to these green weeds here. No matter what I did, as soon as I left off the back button autofocus, it jumped onto there. It just would not lock onto the bird. Not that the bird was small, it's just there wasn't enough contrast because it detects by contrast detecting. It just couldn't find it. This camera doesn't have eye autofocus for birds. It has eye autofocus for people and animals. Nikon State, by animals, they're talking about pets, cats, dogs. I am going to try to use the eye autofocus for animals on birds. Um, I don't know if I'll have any luck, but I just haven't had the time. Like I said, this is a very quick video. I'm sorry, it has gone a little bit long, but I just want to show you all of this of my thoughts, first impressions.
you can see here it just keeps jumping around until I finally just decide to press the back button or I focus and just lock onto these birds. And now we're doing a mating ritual. So am I happy with this E62? Yes, I am. I know there's downsides to it. The one thing though that I have found is if you follow my recent videos, you'll notice that I've been using a monopod, not carrying my camera handheld anymore. I have the camera on a monopod and it's given me stability and I'm being able to get much better shots because I have the shakes. And also carrying around three and a half kilos of camera gear on my shoulder, which isn't in the best condition, has really been bugging me. So having the monopod has really helped me. But when I've been trying to take video, I found that I'm moving still too much with the monopod. This means that I have to use a tripod. I have to use this beast here. This is my heavy duty tripod, Manfrotto 055 XP Pro Aluminium, around 2.2 kilos without the head. At the moment, I am using a Vanguard pan and tilt, and this pan and tilt has got a really good function in that if I, it has two locking mechanisms. If I lock forward, lock it down here for the pan, it doesn't move. But if I undo the switch, lock it backwards, lock it down, then I've got a very smooth panning sideways. And this is how all the photos were taken, all the videos were taken. I was just panning slightly. If the bird was going up or down, then it's just a matter of just raising this up and down. I was just using the camera and moving around quite easily. It's a bit more weight, but I'm going to put up with this because I want to share video of the birds where I go out. If you have any comments or feedback, have I made the right decision? Leave it in the comment box below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.